Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before you're seated, turn to a couple people and just tell them it takes faith. It, it takes faith. It, it takes faith. It takes faith to live for God. It takes, it takes faith to get out of bed in the morning. It takes, it takes faith just to trust in the Lord and to believe that he's at work in this day and in this hour in our lives. And uh, as we come together, as we look through the Bible over and over and over, it shouldn't surprise us that we are called to live by faith. And, and uh, the just shall live by faith, and, and faith that's pleasing to God, faith that God will answer as it is you know, by your faith, be it unto you. And so faith is stirred on the inside of us. The faith is simply trusting in God that he is going to do something that we don't see at this present time. It's called a miracle. We say we believe in miracles. How many believe in miracles? We, we, we believe in miracles, but nobody wants to get to a place where we need a miracle. We, we want to stay in a comfort zone. We want to stay somewhere where, where we don't need a miracle. We, we want to preach about the Red Sea crossing, but nobody wants to go close to the Red Sea. We, we want to hear about the walls of Jericho falling, but nobody wants to go march around the walls of Jericho. We, we want to see the, the dead raised, but we don't want to get into that situation. So I want to encourage us tonight with, with a short message of, of, of just... Not just you can make it through the end of the day, but we can be victorious in Jesus Christ every day. But it's going to take faith. It's going to take faith, but we can have faith in God. It's going to take faith, simple trust in an almighty, loving, heavenly Father. And we can do that. We must do that. It's essential in this day and in this hour that we be a people that rise up like never before, not just to, to wear a banner, not just to, to have a, a significance of a, of a particular religious denomination, but that we would be children of Almighty God in this day and in this hour. And simply understand that God is not done yet. Regardless of what it looks like, God's not finished and that there's a faith that stirs on the inside of us that regardless of what it looks like on the outside, what it, how bad it looks like in the situations of our world, what someone else is maybe even doing, that we can still have faith in God that He's not done yet. And that we should have that kind of faith that, that declares the will of the Lord, that, that has stirring on the inside that there's still hope for the world that is around us. But most of all, that we get up every morning, not just to make it through another day, not just to make another dollar, not just to try to hopefully hang on till Jesus comes, but that we understand that this world is against us. Life is going to be tough as a follower of Jesus. Life is going to be difficult as a follower of Jesus. But you get to overcome because of Jesus in your life. Too many times... We see people that come to know the Lord because their life is a mess and they get to know Jesus. But, but then as they start to follow after the Lord, they start to realize this world system is all, is all going the wrong direction. And we are always swimming upstream. We're always climbing up the hill. There's always problems that are going to come our way. There's going to be opposition. There's going to be demonic attacks. There's cultural adversity, or adversity that comes against us. All of this is going to happen. That's not a reason to quit. There's really, here's it is. There's no reason to quit. There's no reason to quit. When you know Jesus as your Savior and have the hope of God on the inside of you. I know there's problems. I know there's obstacles. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Peter, if you would. 1 Peter chapter 5. And we want to look at a particular portion of Scripture here. We normally pick out one or two verses in this little this section here that we're going to read. But I want to, I want to kind of set these, these, uh, these precious stones, these verses that we have memorized and, and oftentimes pull them out. But let's look in the context for just a few moments. That This is writing to, to encourage believers that are going through difficulties. This is a writing for believers, that, just like you and me, that, the, that life is difficult for them. They're struggling, most likely because of their background, because they become followers of Jesus in their day and age. Most likely their family has ostracized them. Their family doesn't want to have anything to do with them. 
If they, if they, if most of them in this situation, their culture is making fun of them. It's different than what they... They have only the pagan holidays or maybe the Jewish holidays, but they don't have, have the, the, the holy life of Christ living on the inside of them, the world around them. And so everything seems to be against them as they're going forward. Have you ever felt like that for a day or a week or a month? So what do we do? Too often, Christians just crawl in a hole somewhere and just say, I'm saved, but just live like they're not. And in this day and this hour, as it was written in 1 Peter 5 here, we're encouraged that when there's opposition, that we just need to have a stronger backbone of faith to follow after the Lord anyway and continue to follow after Him in our lives. And how do we do that? Because we have confidence that we can know that God is working beyond what we can see. It's called a vision. Not with our eyes, but with our spirit. God is working even though we can't see it, we believe it. Even though it looks like things might even be getting worse, that we're not led by what we see, we're not led by what we feel, we're led by faith in God's word. And so the word never changes, and so we're going to continue to believe the word regardless of what it looks like, regardless of the situations that we're facing. I'm not saying that there's not a form of reality to the problem. I'm just saying I know the one who can change that reality and that he's working these things out, and we're going to have faith and confidence in him as we go forward. Too many Christians are being controlled by what they see and not by what they believe in God. We say we believe he's a God of miracles, but do we believe in miracles? We say we believe in miracles, but we're depressed, discouraged, and, and, and defeated because we don't see any way out. It's a good place for a miracle. It's a good time for a miracle. It's a good time for God to do something when it's beyond us. When we know God, not only that He is almighty, but when we know He is all loving, turn to your other neighbor if you're close enough and just tell him, God loves you more than that. God loves you. I think that that snags more people than they're questioning God's ability. They question God's love for them. They don't think God would love them that much. Maybe something they've done. Maybe because of the way things are going on around them, they think, well, maybe God must not love me. Has he ever heard something like that? You do not judge the love of God by the circumstances that you're involved in. His, the fact is that he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. should let you know more than anything how much God does love you and that he doesn't leave you. That we know the power of God. We know the endless love of God. So for me... For me individually, I have to believe that there's a good God that is working his will out. I have to have confidence. If I believe he's almighty, if I believe his love is everlasting, then I have to believe he's doing something even when I can't see it with my natural eyes. And that stirs hope and faith on the inside of me. You know, even with Abraham, or excuse me, Abraham, even with with Adam, at the very beginning, God created... But God as the creator also has a sense of perfecting what he has created. There's an ongoing work. It's not that it wasn't perfect, it's just that there's more to it. He created Adam, and yet that it wasn't over. He created Eve. And then even after he had, had created Adam and Eve, he, he wanted Adam to continue to, to subdue and to multiply. There was an ongoing work that he was to do here on this earth. Whatever God is doing on this earth, we should partner with the perfecter. We should work together with God to see his will come to pass here on this earth. And so for his will to come to pass, sometimes we just say, well, if it's God's will, it will happen. But Jesus said, pray to our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If his will was going to just happen then he wouldn't have us pray for it to happen. Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works shall you do. There's something that we partner with and do with. So in life, folks, when we're going through difficult times, stressful times, oppressive times, 
difficult times, when we're going through those moments, let's partner with God to perfect us during those times so that we can see his will come to pass. If Adam, in one sense, even Jesus cooperated and partnered with the Father, where he would say, over he said, not my will, but thy will be done. I only do that which I see or hear the Father say or do. He partnered with, with him. And so we, the church, the body of Christ today, we're not here just living life out on our own. We're not here just doing our own thing. We should be here seeking the plan and will of God. And even when it gets tough and difficult, we don't give up. We're going to continue to say, we're going to keep following after God and work together with him. This whole thing that God started with, with Adam and Eve, it, it wasn't some big bang theory. We didn't crawl out of the swamp and then out of the trees and out of the caves and now we're right here. This, God, he, he did a work, but he started with, with perfect and he created, he said, this is good. Everything I've created is good. And then he says, I want you to perfect it by continuing to work with me to accomplish. Even at the fall of man, he had a plan to redeem us. So let's work together with the partnering with the perfecter in our life. God, things need to change. Does anybody here tonight say things need to change in my life? Anybody say there's some, maybe it's just one thing. Maybe it's just the baby. I don't know, but something needs changed in my life. And things need changed. And God, I need you to show me how to do it. And I'm going to work together with you to make it happen. I can't do it on my own. And the devil's not big enough to stop the plan of God. If we'll work with God. So here we are in 1 Peter chapter 5. Dealing with some people that are on the brink of exhaustion and ready to give up. And this is the word that comes to them. A familiar voice of scriptures as we read it, but let's put it together here. 1 Peter chapter 5, starting at verse 6. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. It's a wonderful symbolic picture here. Is when you put yourself under the hand of God... One, the enemy can't get to you. Two, you don't know what's going on outside the hand of God. It's kind of like if you put your hand over your eyes, you can't see anymore what's going on around you. Sometimes it's best for us not to see what's going on. Sometimes, why is it a natural reaction that when something bad is about to happen, something comes flying at you, what do you do? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. You're about ready to hit a car, what do you do? Close your eyes. It's a natural reaction. And, and I want you to know, spiritually, when we're going through difficult times, you need to make sure you're taking time to let the hand of God go over your eyes. And that you stop being so consumed with, with the way you feel. Please excuse me, I'm not trying to make light of your feelings, but sometimes you need to detach from your emotional attachment for a time. And get, get along, what's the plan of God here? We need to get away from our perception of things because your truth is your perception. And we need to get the hand of God to come over us and get us some distance from the way things are because God can change those things. And even when it comes to working with other people, we, might, we can't force someone else to change. We can't force someone else to get saved. We can't force someone else to get right with God. We can't force someone else to do the right thing. But we can believe that God's working in their life. And there's times that we just need to close our eyes and put ourselves into the mighty hand of God and say, I can't change what's going on out here, but I know that God has got me in a place of protection where God is going to watch over me and, and what's going on around me is not going to affect me. So he says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that closeness of God, that he may exalt you in due season. What a wonderful picture there. You're, you're, you're under the hand of God and just at the right moment, at the right moment, you don't have to climb the ladder. At the light, right moment, you don't have to know when to go forward. At the right moment, God just snatches you up and puts you to that place where you need to be. So, so it's, it, you, don't, you don't have to do anything other than be ready. You, you don't have to take a, 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 a long time there to get to, to prepare yourself and to figure everything out. God Almighty is just able to be able to snatch you up and put you where you need to be. His power at work in our lives. It might look like everything is terrible, but within 24 hours, things can change. In a moment, everything can change. Things can, can be turned around. 
God can snatch you out of that situation and put you up if we'll just keep trusting in him, keep believing in him. Listen, it goes on, cast all your cares on him for he cares for you. How many of your cares do you put over on him? I would think we would be, wouldn't it be wonderful if we said, God said, cast all your debts on him. How many debts would you cast on him? Oh, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You'd be bringing in credit cards and bank notes and, 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 and all, uh, all kinds of stuff. But folks, this is something that is even greater than, in, in severity than a, a debt in, in a financial sense. You can work a couple extra jobs and pay back that debt, but worries, you can, it, it's a consuming fire that never is, is satisfied in your life. Cares are, are, are something that just it consumes and continues to want more in your life. And so he says, cast all of those cares, all of those worries on the Lord. Why? Because he cares about you. Because he loves you. Because he wants to help you. Because he's got a plan to be able to work things out in your life. So worrying never changes the situation. It just ages the person. But when we cast all of those cares over on the Lord, he's the one that's able to change the situation. And it renews our youth in our life. Why that person over there? They act like they don't have a care. Shouldn't that be said about every believer? Huh? Scripture goes on here in verse 8. It seems to quickly jump in, in, from, from our wonderful association we have with the Father and, and what He's able to do in our life. And a reminder, yeah, there is problems here on this earth. On planet Earth, there is situations we've got to deal with. Verse 8, be sober. Uh, uh, self-disciplined is a good word there. Be self-disciplined. Be vigilant. Alert, be alert, be alert. You got to keep your attention here. What, about what? What do we got to keep our attention? Be alert. Because your adversary, the devil. We have an adversary. We have an adversary. He, in the natural, we have no defense against him. In the natural, we are no match to him. But that's why we need to be under the hand of the almighty God. Because their adversary has no defense against our Father God. And he's no opponent to him. He is a defeated foe. And so we do have an adversary, but he's a defeated adversary. We do have an enemy, but he is just he is a, a, a toothless enemy. He does not have the ability to, to come and destroy our lives when we have a relationship and a trust in Almighty God that he's going to work all things together for good. Because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, a hungry lion, seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9, if you couldn't do this, he wouldn't tell you to do it. If you couldn't do this, he wouldn't tell you to do this. Resist him. Do you understand that the enemy does not leave you because you go to church? He leaves you because you resist him. And if you do not resist the enemy, he will reside in your life and continue to cause problems. And the unfortunate fact is that, that he doesn't realize he's not welcome, so he keeps coming back. And we must continue to resist the enemy, resist his plans, resist his temptations, resist his tactics, his traps, his fiery darts that he throws at us. We must constantly resist the enemy in our lives. But we have the ability, the, the delegated authority that has been given to you. Do you understand that you, whoever you are, that has accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, the moment that you ask Jesus into your life, the very second that the Holy Spirit comes and makes your spirit new, you have the divine authority to resist Satan himself in your life. You don't have to call for a legion of angels to help you. You don't have to get 50 praying saints to be able to help you. You can stand against Satan and any and all of the demonic attacks that would come against you 
because you do not resist in your, your own ability. You're not resisting in your level of godliness. You are resisting him in the name of Jesus. And that opens up the authority that has been given to you. And so that's so wonderful that you, you resist him. And what happens then when we resist the enemy? Listen, resist the enemy. Stand fast in faith. Stand fast in faith. Why do we have to resist and stand fast? Because when you resist the enemy, he has to flee from you, but he tries to make it look like he doesn't have to go. He tries to make it look like things aren't going to change. He tries to manipulate the natural circumstances because he is the God of this world system and because he still has the ability to influence with emotions and other people that he would try to come in your way and discourage you along the way. That's why you got to stand fast in... Could we smile when we say that? In faith. That's, and maybe we'll just stop right here and say, that's one of the blessings of being together as a church of faith. That when, my, when one's a little weak, we can, you need, a little extra, you need a little extra faith? Let me help you out. I got a little extra. We can share our faith with one another. We can, when someone's feeling, you know, I'm, I'm getting, my, my faith level's getting a little bit low. We can care for one another and we can pray for one another. We can encourage one another. We can share the word with one another. We can join together as the household of faith along the way. That doesn't mean that we just carry each other and, well, you got a prayer, so you just turn to me and I go resist the devil for you and you can just live life like, like, like no difference. No, that means that we all resist the devil, but we can do it together and we can stand together along the way. These individuals were getting weary standing. Have you ever got weary standing? But that's where we, we say, I, I may be getting tired, but I'm not going to give up yet. It's called tenacity. It's called faithfulness, not just faith. Steadfast in the faith, that's talking about faithfulness along the way. Staying faithful all along the way. There's times that we do get discouraged. There's times that we do get depressed. There's times that, that those come in the natural way. It looks like, why even go on? That's why we need to stand fast in faith and say, because I believe God's going to work this thing out. I don't know how long it's going to last and how long it's going to go, but I know that I can have more faith in God than, than the problems got to be able to come against me in life. It's not always easy. It's not always fun, but it's doable. And then when we see it come to pass and we see the glory of God and the testimony that brings and the encouragement it brings to other people, we say that was no big deal. We did it. God's power was seen in our lives. So we resist him. We stand, faith, faith, uh, stand fast in faith, knowing that the same of sufferings, these same experiences are, are expressed by the brotherhood in the whole world. Verse 10 says, But may the God of all grace favor, who called you to eternal glory in Christ Jesus, after you've suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Now, if you don't have that underlined in your Bible, please do so. You need to understand that in God's plan, that even though there's... God's not planning for you to go through suffering, but in this world there is suffering. But after you stand fast in faith during that time, you can know this, that the time will end and that there's blessings on the other end of it. There's blessings on the other end of it. There's God-ordained provision on the other end. Of it. What are that? That you're going to be perfected. We're talking about partnering with the perfecter. He's going to mature us. He's going to develop us. He's going to strengthen us. He's going to establish us. He's going to settle us. He's talking to these believers that are about to give up. And he says, if you'll just... Hold fast in the faith. When this time passes, you're going to be stronger than you've ever been before. In this day and hour church, we do not need a more fluffy church. We need a more established church. I'm not talking a religious association as much as I'm talking about just confidence in God. That we're, going to be, we're not going to give up. We're, regardless of what, what comes against us in our culture, regardless of what comes against us in our society. We're not going to give up in our faith. And that we know that, that we're going to be strong in the Lord as we go through this thing. 
and that we have one another to be able to trust in and be able to see him work in our lives and fulfill his plan and his will for us. I, I think it's important for us to look at this verse through the Amplified Translation in, in 1 Peter 5, 10. It says, God will himself complete and make you what you ought to be. Wow. God wants to make you what you ought to be. What you ought to be. You know, the enemy wants to come and try to destroy our lives. God wants to come and perfect our lives, mature our lives, complete our lives, establish us, make us what we ought to be. Now, this verse is so wonderful, not only in our own lives, but folks, I want you to start to understand it, this works in you, but this is where faith starts to look in other people. Does anybody know somebody that's not what they should be? And it's really easy to sit there and shake your head and say, mm-mm, they're just never going to get it. It's just real easy to shake your head and say, man, that's just, that, you know, whatever. But faith looks at them and said, God's work in their life. He's at work at what they should be. He's going to continue to work in their lives. They're going through a tough time right now, but I believe God's working in their lives, what they should be. I'm going to, I'm going to hook up whatever little bit of faith they might have. I'm going to join my faith to theirs. I'm going to believe that God's working in them and going to work through them, that he's got a plan for their lives to create and work in them and complete what they ought to be, to establish and ground them securely and to strengthen them and to settle them. The psalmist says in, a, in Psalm 138, verse 8, Psalm 138, verse 8, the psalmist David said, The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Psalm 138, verse 8, write that scripture down if nothing else, and I want you to take that verse home, I want that thought home. I want you to start confessing that over your life to start work. Maybe things aren't going great right now. Maybe things have been tough. Maybe it seems like there's opposition against you. Maybe it seems like the devil's fighting against you. People are fighting against you. I want you to have confidence in this, that you're, you're, you're working, you're partnering with the perfecter, and you can simply say, the Lord will perfect that which is concerning me. God's going to work it out. God's not done yet. Do you realize how, how much of a bold declaration of faith that simply is? God's not done yet. And to release it into his ability. And to say that regardless of the way things look, perceive, or feel, is not going to determine to me the way things are. The Amplified Translation that says of the whole verse, it says, The Lord will accomplish that which concerns me. I'm going to work with God. It's in my heart not to be disobedient. And so it's not that I'm trying to achieve something great. I'm just working with what God's plans is for my life. And just realize the devil cannot stop the plan of God in my life. It goes on, it says, Your unwavering kindness, loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hand. I want you to know that's what God is saying over your life. He's not going to abandon the works of his, of his hand in your life. You are the work of his hand. You are his workmanship. You are his creation. You are born of his spirit. And he's not going to... If there's a thought that comes to your mind that you've been abandoned by God, it's a lie and you need to resist it. And you need to stand in faith, affirm against it. And you need to know that God's loving kindness is for you and he will not abandon you in your life. And you need to declare out of your mouth and remove that thought and replace it with the truth of God's word. God he Almighty, he will establish those things concerning my life. His plan for my life will come to pass. I will trust in the Lord to see it work and to see it come to pass. One of my favorite scriptures for, for, for decades now is Philippians 1.6 where the Apostle Paul says, I am, I am confident of this very thing that he which began a good work in me, that he will complete it. The Amplified goes on and says that he will continue to perfect and complete up until the very day of Jesus' return. Do you sense a level of commitment from God in our lives? We, we, we are so wishy-washy with, with, with serving the Lord. We up and down, in and out, whether I feel like it or not. And, you know, I don't feel like reading my Bible. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like going to church. And, well, then there's some people at church, you know, well, I don't like them, and they don't like me, and, you know, and, 
and, and I prayed once and God didn't answer it. We're so wishy-washy in our commitment. With, and Almighty God says something like, I will work in your life until the time of the return of Jesus Christ. Even if you're going the wrong way, I'm going to do everything I can to, to, to gently lead you back. I'm not going to make you do the right thing. But God is saying, I'm not going to abandon you. I want to work in your life. But are we working with God? Are we working with him or are we working against him as we're following after him? Life, I understand, gets difficult at times, but really following the Lord should get easier as we go along. Can I get an amen and, uh, by somebody that would make other people believe they're serving the Lord? Well, right here. So, I mean, yes. But here's the problem. We... We start and then we fall back. We go a little bit and we fall back. We get free and then we get back into bondage. We get delivered and then we get back into the snares and the traps. We stop a habit of sin and then we get back into the habit again. I thought it was interesting, an illustration that just hit me today as I was going through this. You know, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 the moon landing. Uh, they, they, it was a wedding gift to the Dykstras um, when they, they, 50th anniversary here. So, but 50 years ago, they, they launched the, uh, the Apollo 11, successfully took a man to the moon, walked on the moon, and returned. Before he could step on the moon, they had to get man off of the earth. That was the biggest part of the mission. That what took the most effort. It took something like 950,000 gallons of fuel to go to the moon and back successfully. That's, 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 a, that's a lot. But here's the interesting thing. Over 500,000 gallons of that fuel was used to lift that rocket off and to go the first two miles. The first two miles. It took the most effort, the most energy, to break free from that, 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 that gravitational pull. Everything was shaking, you know, and it looked like it was all going to fall. That first two miles took over half of their fuel. But once they got going and they broke free, it w took them you know, less than a half of that to be able to go the, what was the 400 some thousand miles there and back. You see, this is what we do as Christians. We get saved. God releases an enormous amount of spiritual energy in our life. We are born of his spirit. We are transformed out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Spirit comes and lives on, on the inside of us. And an enormous amount of his holy power is released to us to break things in our lives and change things in our lives. And we get going for about the first two weeks and then all of a sudden things are start shaking. We start losing sight of the way things used to be, the comfortable attitude of life, the way of thinking that we used to have. We get challenged in our life. Is this going to work? Fear starts to slip in our And if we're not careful, we fall back to where we are comfortable. Then we come to church and we hear a good sermon and we say, oh, we're going to do it. So we, we begin really a huge amount of faith to try to get this thing going again. And we do that over and over and we think, and what do we think? Man, this faith walk is so hard. This is why it's hard. You keep going the same two miles over and over again. What we need to decide to do is we're going all the way on the journey and we're not going to go back and have to keep going that first two miles again. I'm going to follow after what? I'm going to change my way of thinking to follow him. I'm going to stir my faith that I'm going to follow after him. And I want you to know that as you, as you start walking with the Lord and you don't keep going back to those old ways, it takes, in one sense, less faith because you don't have all of the old ways pulling you back. Huh? You don't have all of the old limits telling you you can't do it anymore. You don't have all of the old habits that are controlling your life. You don't have all of the old guilt that's come on you in the past. And you get out there and you start going and you're like, why, after a while, why would I want to go back the other way? 
Paul is really encouraging the believers here. God did an incredible thing when he made salvation available for every single one of us. Let's live like it. Let's live like it. Let's release that power in our lives. Let's, let's look at situations that, would, that would, would, would knock down the normal person and say, God's going to work all things together for good in my life. Let's look at situations at that, that at first our, our feelings and our perception of it is saying there's no way out. Be able to say, I can't see the way out, but I know that my God is working a way. He's the way maker. He promised to make a way. And all things concerning my life, he's going to work them out in my life. And I'm going to simply trust in him. I'm going to keep following after him. I'm going to do things that I've never done before because of the God who wants to do incredible things in my life. It's not because I have great faith. I just have simple faith. It's not because I'm a super, 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 super whatever. It's because I'm just going to follow after the plan of God. And I'm going to cooperate with God. And when I do that, things work out at the end. Amen? Things work out when I don't quit in following after the Lord. I want to encourage us as we, as we as a church, as we're going forward. I'm believing that God wants to do some incredible things in our lives. Why? Because he's an incredible God. Why wouldn't he want to do incredible things in our lives? And I want to make sure that as we go forward, that maybe there's going to be uh, in your own life, or, or it might seem that there's times of, of, of well, is it ever going to work? Is it ever going to change? Is it ever going to get better? Uh, if you quit, no. If you stay within just that two-mile rotation of just keep going back and forth two miles, no. But if you'll say, you know what? It, we're going to go all the way with God. All things concerning us, he's going to work them out in Jesus' name. The Spirit of God's got a plan, and we're going to follow after it. It's going to be incredible to see what God wants to do and how he's going to do it. That we have a bold declaration of what we know God wants to do, not just an affirmation of what is. Anybody can tell you what is. I don't know how many people told me, Pastor, the steps out there need fixed. Okay, thank you. I, I, I didn't know that, but I appreciate your opinion. I see that. I know that. There was very few people that said, let's fix the steps. So as we go forward as a church... It's easy to point out things that might not be the way they should be. But by faith, we need to be people saying what God's going to do. And this place, it'll be a time the Spirit of God's going to be moving so great here that uh, all you healthy people are going to have to sit in the back because all the sick people will be up front so they can get ministered to. Some of you are like, what? what? I got to give up my seat? I got to sit somewhere else? I got I to sit in the back? There should be a time where we, we can't hardly get into the place because that's what they did in Jesus' ministry. 801, starting to cost me now overtime. 801. But uh, as it was in Jesus' ministry, wasn't it? House was so full that they couldn't get him in through the doors. Huh? Yeah, you better have a long rope, huh, Deborah? But if they're coming in through the roof. But, but that needs to be an attitude. We should have an expectation oh, that God's going to be moving. God's going to be doing... I, I, I'm not, I'm not looking for just better sermons. I'm looking for a greater move of God. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your presence. And we close our eyes not out of religious tradition, but we just we allow the hand of God to cover our eyes. We, we sense your closeness. And in some ways, we sense a closeness of what you're about to do. Something that we can't see with a natural eye. But we sense in our heart that you want to accomplish and to do. This world is just, it's, it's just gone too crazy. Uh, this world is just upside down. This world is calling evil good and good evil. This, this world is out of control. This world needs an incredible move of God and is going to come through your church. We just want to see that. We want to be a part of that. We want to participate with what you're doing. So we will not allow the, the times that we're in of whether it's discouragement or, or whether it's opposition, whether it's a seemingly a dry time and nothing's happening, we're not going to allow the moment to stop us from the momentum that you have going in the spiritual realm. And we see into that, and we declare over our church, this is a place where the hand of God is moving. This is a place where lives are changed and transformed. This is a place where people are saved and healed and filled with your spirit and transformed. People are called 
and the, and the holy calling of God in their life is revealed to them. This is a place where people feel the, extra, the experience, the, the love of God that transforms and changes. This is a place where people are, are delivered immediately from drugs and addictions in their lives, healed in their bodies. Or why not even raise people from the dead? Lord, this is a place that all things are possible. And so we simply declare your word. We, we, we resist the lies of the enemy. We stand in faith. And we will see these things come to pass for your glory. Because we know it's your will. And you're not done yet. In Jesus' name. Amen.